Thanks, Alex, for the nice introduction. On behalf of my co-authors, John Solro, Tobias Krauss, and Jürgen Steimli, I will present soft inkjet circuits, a rapid approach for fabrication of soft circuits using a commodity inkjet printer. This work is done in collaboration between HCI Lab at Saarland University and a material science lab at the Lebanese Institute for New Materials, both located uh, on the same campus in Saarbrücken, Germany. Soft interfaces, soft interactive devices are becoming increasingly popular as they offer unique features and, they, and can be seamlessly embedded in demanding physical contexts. Moving beyond flexible only devices, a wide, array, a wide array of soft interfaces have been explored. These devices typically include conformal skin worn interfaces, stretchable objects, e textile, and shape changing devices. Despite the increasing popularity of, so, of these soft interactive devices, their fabrication remains complex and time consuming as they commonly require either extensive manual work, such as for screen printing and silicon costing, or expert knowledge and dedicated equipment. And hence, these approaches are hard to implement for rapid fabrication. Instead of these manual or slow approaches, what if we just simply inkjet print these devices? Well, this is exactly what people in material science are working on, fabricated these interfaces by inkjet printing. However, for this, they are using expensive research-grade printer instead, and these printers are expensive, complex to operate, and slow to print. Therefore, this approach didn't make into the HCI DIY community. In contrast, pioneering work for, by Kawahara et al., demonstrated how rapid inkjet printing can empower the HCI community. Their approach enabled printing custom, custom flexible circuits within minutes using an inexpensive desktop inkjet printer, which has facilitated prototyping of interfaces for research in various domains. However, their approach is limited to a single ink and few substrate materials and not compatible with stretchable textile or ultra-thin devices. Here we present the first systematic approach for rapid fabrication of multi-material soft circuits on a commodity inkjet printer. Our techniques support a wide set of soft-based substrate materials such that they are stretchable, ultra-thin, compatible with textile, and reshapeable. Our techniques also support multi-material printing of wide variety of functional inks, including conductive inks, and isolating inks along with graphical inks. First, let me give you an overview of our approach. We first start by creating a digital design of the circuit. Any 2D vectographic uh, tool can be used. Then we print the design using a commodity inkjet printer. After curing, the circuit undergoes a heat curing step. Then we added electronic components in connection using common approaches, for example, Z-tape, sewing, or soldering. This pipeline enables easy and rapid fabrication of multi-material soft circuits and can easily be replicated by using commonly available tools. Out of these four steps, I will focus on printing in this talk, which is the major challenge in enabling this pipeline. In printing, we contribute in four categories. We provide useful guidelines for appropriate printer selection. We introduce the simultaneous usage of multiple inks in one printer. We extended the set of substrate material from flexible only films to soft and stretchable materials. At la and last, we presented DIY techniques to to enhance the compatibility between these inks and substrates. I won't, uh, I won't go into the details of the printer selection. However, I do want to highlight that we did an extensive exploration of printers and identified the requirements. 
This allowed us to recommend two suitable models out of a large variety of commodity inkjet printers available. Details are in the paper. Now that we have selected a printer, let's look at how to select inks for multifunctional -ink, multi printing. For this, we first select our functional inks and then we combine them into a single printer to print multi-material circuits. The first crucial step of ink selection is to identify which inks are printable on our selected printer. Well, this is not a trivial task, given the large number of available inks and that we might want to select multiple inks with different functionality. As a solution, we propose to use a systematic approach developed in material science as a tool for HCI researchers and makers to select printable inks in a feasible manner improving over the, co the common trial and error-based selection. The main idea is to predict the inkjet printability based on three ink properties, which are commonly available in the data sheet of the inks and the nozzle diameter of the printer. The printability is then expressed by prom number Z. Here is the equation to calculate it based on four noun values. I'm not going to bore you with the details of this equation. What more important is that how to interpret the result. For printability, Z should be in the range from one to 10 as highlighted in this graph. Values outside these, this, this range are not printable. This systematic approach allows us, gives us the ability to select printable inks to demonstrate our approach, in addition to graphical inks, we selected three functional inks, silver for high conductivity, P.PSS for high stretchability, and PVP as an insulating ink. Based on our selection process, we can easily identify a set of inks with desired functional properties. This, in turn, enables our multi-material approach that combines multiple inks into a single printer. This approach leverages the feature of commodity inkjet printers that they, they use different cartridges for each color channel, and that each cartridge has its own individual printing head, which means that we can combine multiple inks into a single printer using these separate heads. And so we did combine our selected functional inks into a single printer. For instance, in this setup, we put isolating PVP ink into color cartridges and silver into the black cartridge of the printer. We then printed isolating PVP ink on top of silver to have exposed electrodes and isolated circuitry. Similarly, we can even combine conductive inks with graphic inks to print circuits with art layer and a single pass. We can even combine all functional inks in a single printer. This gives us the largest flexibility for combining functional inks. For instance, here we printed silver with P.PSS in a single pass to have circuits that combines the complementary benefits of silver-based and polymeric conductors. Now that we systematically select the inks and combine them for multi-ink, multifunctional printing, let, let me talk about the soft substrate materials. One of our main contributions is that we extended the set of substrate materials from those predominantly used substrate, such as PET films and porto paper, to soft materials. We have explored a broad set of materials that exhibit the mechanical properties of soft substrates, such as they are stretchable, ultra-thin, compatible with textile, and reshapeable. I will show some examples later. Now I have talked about inks and substrates. As a last important point, we need to consider the interaction between these two. That is basically some of combination of inks and substrate cause issue and are thus not printable. To address these issues, we present DIY approaches and conducted series of evaluation to make inks compatible with the substrates. I will not go into the details of methods here. You can find those in the paper. 
The thing I want to highlight, however, is the result, which is that using the, those DIY approaches, we successfully printed all inks presented above on each substrate. This, this, is the visualize, this is visualized in the summary image of the printed traces of highly conductive silver and intrinsically stretchable P dot PSS on our four selected substrates. The image shows that we can print with fine features and the indicated value shows that we achieve a good level of conductivity for all inks and all substrates. With that, I have explained our main contribution in printing, which in turn allows us to realize our fabrication pipeline. Last, I want to show you four application examples that demonstrate the versatile capabilities of our approaches for rapid prototyping. The first example demonstrates the rapid fabrication of a stretchable input device. We fabricated this device by printing four resistive strain sensors on stretchable TPU substrates. The sensors are designed in a matrix layout which allows to detect deformation input as shown in this video. The total fabrication process took less than 10 minutes, which shows that the ease of use of our approach for rapid prototyping. Our second example demonstrates rapid fabrication of soft interactive e-textile using a, a transfer approach. It also demonstrates the ease of fabricating a design featuring a full color art layer with integrated circuit traces. First, color and silver inks are printed in a single pass onto the transfer substrate and then transferred by simply ironing the design onto the fabric. Conventional electronic components as used for e-textile applications can then be aided by sieving with conductive yarn. Fabrication took about eight minutes in this case and the the result nicely demonstrates that integration of the printed soft circuits with the textile. With our third example, we demonstrate rapid fabrication of interfaces even closer to the body. We present the first electronic skin tattoo fabricated using a simple desktop inkjet printer. Our approach allows to rapidly fabricate these ultra-thin devices while prior work relied on time-consuming processes like screen printing. In this example, we realize skin-mounted interfaces for continuous measurement of electrodermal, electrodermal activity. To this end, we leverage our multi-material printing capabilities to create skin-exposed electrode. We first print two electrodes with con connecting traces onto tattoo paper and then print additional layer of PVP to isolate traces while leaving the electrodes exposed. Our last example demonstrates the versatility of our approach by printing onto a shape-changeable thermoplastic material. We fabricate an interactive body accessory that features custom-designed artwork and circuits and is, is moldable into a desired shape. We first print the graphic and circuits circuit design onto a thermoplastic films in a single pass using, using silver and color ink. We then molded the bracelet into the desired curved shape by heating it. Last, we soldered electronic components directly onto the printed circuit. As a result, we fabricated an interactive variable device with custom shape, visual appearance, and electronics within 10 minutes. In summary, our example demonstrates the versatile capabilities of our approach for rapid prototyping of soft circuits. I invite everyone to come to see these fabricated prototypes at our demo right after this talk. In summary, I have presented to you soft inkjet circuits, the first approach for rapid fabrication of soft circuit using a commodity inkjet printer. It supports inkjet printing of circuits that they are stretchable, ultra-thin, high resolution, and integrated with wide variety of materials for prototyping. It supports multi-material functional printing on a desktop printer for realizing multi-material devices, including conductive and isolated inks. 
And with this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you for your attention, and I am happy to take questions. Uh, great collection of work. So my question is, do you need to cure the ink uh, after printing each layer? So you mentioned about the multi-layer circuit, but my question is, do you really need to cure each layer after no, printing? No, we only need drying, not the, not the curing after each step. After each step, the curing is, is good, but only drying is enough, just to let the solvent evaporate. So I like to more detailed we know the printing process. So you printed the first layer and then dried it, yes. and print the second layer and dried it. Yes. So how long will it take? Uh, depends on the substrate. For example, for some substrate like the, like the, trans, the, 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 the textile transfer one, it absorbs inks very quickly, so you don't need to wait. For oh. TPU, you probably need more waiting because it doesn't absorb the ink quickly. Yeah, or you can use like a, like a mild heater or a heat gun to quickly dry it. Yeah, because one of the biggest benefits of the inkjet, uh, instant inkjet circuit is sintering free process. So yes. is, is there any possibility of this process yes. to achieve a sintering free? Yeah, that's a good question. But the, the, here the heating is actually giving us the leverage to use multiple materials because we only need heat. Uh, for that approach, I guess the limited by the substrate one. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so I was wondering also, um, uh, in, t in terms of, so, so a lot of these uh, designs are, you know, thin, small, uh, but we, you know, it's, it's hard to ignore the cables that are run out from uh, the, the circuits. So have you looked at using backscatter or enabling antennas or sort of remote powering of these circuits? Would that be compatible yes. with this fabrication? Uh, I guess that's one of our future, <laughs> we mentioned it in the paper and future works, that currently it is by integration we use the wiring, but later for the, for the wireless connection, maybe the antennas, that can be another one of the direction to use these interfaces. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the author again. Thank you.